Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing regarding the process of fertilization. Fertilization is a process in which the haploid male gamete sperm fuses with haploid female gamete ova to form a diploid zygote. So that is fertilization. So in case of the humans, fertilization occurs in fertilization occurs in ampulla. So in case of the NCRT textbooks, you can just check if you are having older version of the NCRT, there they have mentioned ampullary isthmic junction is the site of fertilization. But according to the update one, okay, fertilization takes place in the ampulla, but not in the junction which is there in between the ampulla and the isthmus. So fertilization <coughs> occurs in that of the ampulla region and this fertilization results in the formation of the zygote. So what are those events which are being involved in that of the fertilization to occur in case of the humans? So in the fertilization to occur, the first step is arrival of the sperm. Second step is arrival of the secondary oocyte. Third step is a capacitation of the sperm. Next is the acrosomal reaction. Next is a cortical reaction. And the last one is the affimixes or the same carrion or the same gamete. So these are the six steps by which the entire process of fertilization occurs in case of the human beings. So let's get into the details about the steps involved in that of the fertilization. So the first step in that of the fertilization is arrival of the sperms. So once after the copulation is being occurring, once after the male ejaculates or inseminates the semen into that of the female reproductive system, so that entire process is said to be insemination. Okay. So the process of releasing of the semen into the female genital tract is called as insemination, during which around on an average around 3 to 4 ml of the semen is being introduced into the female genital tract where each ml each ml consists of around 80 to 100 millions of sperms which means during the insemination process around 300 to 400 millions of the sperms are being released into the female genital tract. Now, one common thing what we have to notice here is if 300 to 400 millions of the sperms are even released into the female genital tract, it is that only one sperm will fertilize or it is able to uh, enter or penetrate into that of the secondary oocyte, thereby the fertilization process gets completed, which means remaining whatever the millions of the sperms are there so what happens to them where they go so that we'll discuss in detail now each ml of the semen should have 80 to 100 millions of the sperm so this is said to be a normal count a normal healthy count and the individual is said to be fertile by chance if the count reduces of around 40 to 60 million sperms if an individual in his each ml of the semen, if he has 40 to 60 million of the sperms, then he is said to be uh, having a condition called as oligospermia. Okay, so that you have to remember where oligospermia generally results into the sterility or non fertile males. So, under normal condition, when a healthy individual inseminates, so 300 to 400 millions of the sperms are being introduced into the female genital tract. So thereafter, the sperm starts uh, moving towards uh, the particular uh, part of the female reproductive system where the secondary oocyte is being uh, waiting for the arrival of the sperm. So how the sperm comes to the conclusion that the ova is being present in a one particular uh, direction but not on the other side. So that is because the ova which is being present in that of the oviduct, okay, so that releases a chemical that is called as a fertilizant, okay, whereas the sperm uh, releases another chemical that is called as anti-fertilizing. So in between the secondary oocyte and the sperm, so there is a fertilizing and anti-fertilizing reaction takes place where these two are the type of proteins. So by these interaction, the sperm will directly go to that of 
the second oocyte and uh, it uh, penetrates into the second oocyte thereby forming the fertilized product that is called as zygote now when millions of the sperms are being introduced among the millions some of uh, the millions of the sperms are being trapped uh, under the vaginal secretions where vaginal secretions are generally said to be acidic so due to that acidic content some millions of the sperms may be uh, dead and thereafter some of the million sperms may get even stuck in that of the cervical mucus where, where the mucus membrane of the cervix where secretes this mucus so there the millions of the sperms are being trapped and some millions of the sperms are being uh, trapped in that of the uterus so finally around uh, hundreds of the sperms will enter into the fallopian tube and only one sperm is able to penetrate into the secondary oocyte right so this fertilizing and anti fertilizing reaction which occurs between the ova as well as uh, the sperm so that is called as chemotaxis the entire phenomena is called as chemotaxis but the movements which are being generated so that is called as chemotactic movement so here the sperm which enters into the female genital tract it puts its 50% of the entire effort to reach to that of the secondary oocyte whereas the 50% of the effort is being also made by that of the female reproductive system how it happens see for example in the human semen semen contains of various of the components like fructose or it may be citric acid or it may be ascorbic acid so these acts as energy nutrients for the sperm to travel and to reach its destination whereas this semen also consists of uh, hormone like substances which are called as prostaglandins so these prostaglandins are secreted which are being present in the semen as well as it is present in the vaginal secretions also so this prostaglandin which is present so that uh, is being involved where it acts upon that of the muscular uh, part of the uterine region and it makes these uterine region to undergo contraction so when the contraction takes place the sperms are easily able to penetrate into the deeper part of the female reproductive system so there 50% effort means the swimming of the sperm okay so that is being done by the sperm itself and the 50% of the sperm that is contraction contraction of the uterus everything female re genital tract so that is being done by the prostaglandins so 50% is by male gamete and 50% is by female reproductive system so when both are being uh, doing in a coordinated manner so the sperm is able to reach its uh, destination so here the sperm which is being present which is being traveling into that of the female genital tract so this sperm uh, moves at a speed of around 1.5 to 3 mm per minute so this is the normal speed of the sperm okay and thereafter the movements which are being the movements which are being shown by the sperms here so these movements are called as undulating movements so by these undulating movements the sperm reaches to its a uh, particular part that is uterus as well as the fallopian tube and thereafter there are certain changes which occurs during the process of capacitation that we'll discuss and the sperm lifespan on an average it is being said that the sperm lifespan in the female genital tract is around 5 days but uh, the active activeness of the sperm will be around uh, 48 hours that is a particular time where the sperm is able to uh, fertilize with that of the secondary oocyte so that is the first uh, a uh, step that is called as arrival of the sperm so sperm is being released by uh, insemination process into the female genital tract and all the changes takes place and thereafter the sperm reaches the uh, fallopian tube so next is arrival of uh, the secondary oocyte so this is when that is during the 14th day of the menstrual cycle okay the ovulation takes place where the secondary oocyte which is there in that of the graphene follicle that has been released into that of the fallopian tube or the oviduct now by the help of the cilia or the peristaltic movement of the oviduct the secondary oocyte is being sent towards that of the ampulla region so that takes place okay that is the second step that is called as arrival of secondary oocyte and uh, the lifespan of the secondary oocyte is said to be active that is around 12 to 
24 hours which means the sperm has to fertilize okay this second oocyte within 12 to 24 hours after its lifespan so that is the second step that is secondary i mean arrival of the secondary oocyte so thereafter is the next step which occurs in that of the female reproductive system that is called as a capacitation of sperms it is being believed that the sperms if they swim in their normal speed that is 1.5 to 3 mm per minute around half an hour max to max around half an hour the sperm is able to reach to its destination that is secondary oocyte but that does not happen why because the sperms which are being present okay so these are being bounded by many number of chemicals on their head region like the way they are like the sterols are present and some anal glycoproteins are being present on them and uh, when these are being present or deposited over them the sperms are unable to move in a normal particular uh, pattern so this step that is a capacitation of the sperm which occurs in the female reproductive system that takes around five to six hours so during this five to six hours every sperm which is being present so that sperm undergoes all these changes so what are those changes the first change what happens is destabilization of the acrosomal membrane means the acrosomal membrane where the acrosome generally consists of various of the sperm lysins or hydrolytic enzymes so those have to, those have to be they are present in the acrosome but they have to be released okay because their main function is they are involved in penetration of the sperm into the secondary oocyte so that membrane which covers the acrosome so that now becomes a very thin okay so that is the first step destabilization of the acrosomal membranes takes place in the sperm thereafter is influx of the calcium ions so calcium ions which are being present in the semen or in that of the female genital tract so those calcium ions starts penetrating into the body of the sperm and when these influx of the calcium ions takes place then this influx of the calcium ions increases the motility of the sperm where initially i told you the sperms are having undulating movements now they will get converted into a whiplash movements so this transformation helps the sperm to swim very easily and very important point is a uh, removal of the sterol and seminal glycoproteins takes place which means surrounding the head region when these sterol and seminal glycoproteins are deposited so that gives an extra weight to that of the sperm where the motility of the sperm can be reduced so that removal takes place when that removal takes place sperms even become lighter so that they can swim little faster to reach uh, the destination so this entire process is said to be the capacitation where the sperms are being made into active okay so that activation of the sperm is said to be capacitation and the time taken here is around 5 to 6 hours so once after the capacitation occurs in the female reproductive system now the sperm now the sperm reaches to that of the secondary oocyte which is being present in the ampullary region so this is the sperm which is ready to enter into that of the secondary oocyte so where in case of the sperm you are able to see the first part that is head next is inside is the nucleus and three fourth of the nucleus is surrounded by acrosome and the longest portion is the tail now this is the first step this is the next second one uh, third fourth and fifth so how the sperm is able to penetrate into the secondary oocyte so so the first step what happens once the sperm reaches to that of the secondary oocyte as you know that secondary oocyte is being covered by a layer of the cells epithelial cells so that is what we call it as a corona radiata so this corona radiata which is the outermost layer in that of the secondary oocyte so that has to be first uh, broken or dissolved thereafter the sperm can enter into the next layer that is zona pellucida and again the second layer has to be dissolved thereafter the sperm can enter into the plasma membrane and thereafter passing into that of the plasma membrane the sperm nucleus will reach to that of the ova nucleus so what happens here is during this process the acrosomal reaction takes place as i said 
when the deserialization of the acrosomal membrane had occurred the membrane has now very thin so as soon as this uh, uh, plasma membrane of the sperm comes in contact with that of the corona radiata so the thin acrosomal membrane gets uh, ruptured so once it gets ruptured the sperm uh, the enzymes which are present those are the sperm lysins or the hydrolytic enzymes so these hydrolytic enzymes are being released in a sequential way where the first one which is being released is called a hyaluronidase so this enzyme okay now starts acting upon the acid which is being present so that acid present in between the corona radiata is called as hyaluronic acid where the corona radiata cells are being tightly attached by that of the hyaluronic acid which prevents the entry of the sperm but once the enzyme is being released from that of the acrosome so this enzyme starts uh, dissolving or uh, feeding on that of the hyaluronic acid so when the contact between the two cell which is being tightly by the help of hyaluronic acid when that entire acid is not there then the cells which are being present in that particular region so they become loosened okay so thereafter uh, the second sperm lysine that is called as corona penetrating enzyme is released now this enzyme dissolves the corona radiata cells and thereby it allows the sperms to reach to the next part that is called as zona pellucida so once the sperm reaches to that of the zona pellucida the third enzyme that is called as acrosin or zona lysin is being released so this acrosin or zona lysin when it is being released it starts dissolving the zona pellucida region of uh, the secondary oocyte so as soon as it enters now in the ova in the secondary oocyte there will be the resumption of the meiosis where earlier you know that it is secondary oocyte which is being arrested in the metaphase so that resumes the meiosis and thereby it uh, enters into anaphase telophase and thereafter the entire secondary oocyte now gets converted into ootid and because along with that of the uh, ootid there is present presence of a uh, uh, non functional polar body so that polar body formation takes place okay so thereafter the sperm is now penetrating or reaching to that of zona pellucida uh, region okay so that binding that attachment of the sperm to that of the zona pellucida membrane so that is felicitated by the zp3 uh, receptors which is being present in case of uh, the zona pellucida region next what happens is as soon as the sperm reaches to that of the inner membrane that is called as the plasma membrane of uh, the secondary oocyte okay so this plasma membrane now gets converted into fertilization membrane means certain chemical changes occurs as soon as the sperm touches to the plasma membrane so thereafter the plasma membrane now gets converted into fertilization membrane so this entire process of conversion of a fertilization membrane into sorry plasma membrane into fertilization membrane is called as activation calyx so this activation calyx occurs where plasma membrane has converted into fertilization membrane so as soon as the sperm reaches the fertilization membrane now it is the action the reaction which is being brought about by the ova where it is the cortical reaction so which means at the periphery of the ooplasm of the ova there are presence of the small minute granules so these granules are the cortical granules now these cortical granules mainly their function is they prevent the polyspermy so how they prevent the polyspermy that is as soon as the sperm reaches to that of the plasma membrane this cortical uh, granules which are present they start releasing cortical enzymes such as proteases peroxidases and glycosaminoglycans so these enzymes are being released into the plasma membrane region where the first one is called as the protease so protease clips so that clips the perivitelline uh, and it thatters the protein and the next one that is peroxidases so this particular enzyme so that hardens this plasma membrane which is there so that gets hardened because of 
the enzyme peroxidases and the last one that is called as glycose aminoglycans so this starts uh, absorbing water which is present in the cytoplasm and that water starts accumulating in the perivitelline space thereby forming an additional hyaline layer so that when all these changes takes place okay the zona pellucida region becomes hard and tough so that prevents the entry of the other sperm so when all these changes occurs so what happens here is the sperm nucleus which is present so this sperm nucleus is being inserted into that of the oplasm along with that of the proximal centriole which means the middle piece and the tail of the sperm is being excluded whereas the nucleus as well as the proximal centriole enters into the oplasm now in the last step what happens is the amphi mixes or the syn carrion occurs or syn gamete takes place so this particular place where the sperm is entering into the oplasm so there is a formation of a small cone like structure by the ova so that is called as fertilization cone through which the nucleus of the sperm enters into the oplasm now once the nucleus enters when the sperm nucleus enters into that of the oplasm in the o in the nucleus of the ova also certain changes takes place in the sperm nucleus also certain changes occurs so what are those changes first we will discuss about the changes which occurs in the nucleus of the ova so here uh, the uterine which is non functional so that uterine now gets converted into the functional ova which means the polar body which was being formed so that is being extruded thereafter the nuclear envelope which is being present okay so that starts uh, uh, degenerating or it starts becoming a uh, weaker thereafter here in case of the sperm nucleus the changes are as soon as the sperm nucleus enters into the oplasm first thing is uh, this sperm nucleus starts absorbing the water which is present in the cytoplasm so once it absorbs water it uh, swells in the size it increases in the size and thereafter it starts rotating 180 degrees so that is second change third change is the nuclear envelope which is being present in the sperm nucleus so that also starts uh, dissolving the chromosomes which are present in both the oval nucleus as well as in the sperm nucleus so these uh, start uh, getting uh, released now once all these changes takes place okay the sperm nucleus now starts moving towards uh, the nucleus of the ova and along with this the proximal centriole which is present that also starts moving and according to a theory it is being stated that this proximal centriole which enters so this starts dividing and it divides and it forms into so it results in the formation of the spindle fibers now this spindle fibers what it makes is uh, this uh, chromosomes maternal chromosomes which are there 23 so this haploid set of maternal chromosomes and this haploid set of the paternal chromosomes so those are being combined by the help of the spindle fibers which are being uh, formed by the help of the proximal centriole so when these two nucleus which is one is the male pronucleus because it has undergone the change the other one is female pronucleus so when male and female pronuclei when they fuse together the entire process is said to be the amphi mixes or it is called as syn carrion or syn gamete so that has been facilitated by the proximal centriole so when both the maternal paternal chromosomes when they mix together okay now the ova has been converted that entire cell now gets converted into entire cell gets converted into the zygote okay so this is all about the process of fertilization where the first step which occurs is arrival of the sperm second one is arrival of the secondary oocyte next is capacitation of the sperm acrosomal reaction cortical reaction and the last one is amphi mixes now what is uh, the importance what is the significance of fertilization the significance of fertilization are the first one is fertilization completes the process of oogenesis which means the secondary oocyte which is being arrested in the metaphase 2 okay 
so that the resumption of the meiosis occurs when the sperm enters into the secondary oocyte where there is extrusion of the polar body thereby the secondary oocyte gets converted into ooted and ooted becomes a ovum so that completes the process of oogenesis next is fertilization is involved in restoration of the ploidy that is the cell the ploidy of the cell is being restored which means when the male haploid male gamete and haploid female gamete are being fused together so okay so thereafter what happens the ploidy the both the haploid cells when they fuse together thereafter there is a restoration of the ploidy of the cell where the cell now becomes a into diploid next is fertilization results in the genetic recombination so when the main nucleus of sperm which carries a set of a haploid set of the paternal chromosome and a female gamete that is ova carries a haploid set of the maternal chromosome so when these chromosomes mix together fuse together so thereafter what happens reshuffling of the chromosomes takes place thereby reshuffling of the genes which results in the various of the genetic recombination and these recombinations results in the formation of the variation so thereby the individuals which are being born to the same parents they appear to be different that is because of the reshuffling of the chromosomes which occurs during the process of fertilization fertilization results in the determination of the sex of the young ones or the next generation so generally we know that uh, in case of the female that is ova ova always carries uh, uh, for example if you look after ova has a same set of the chromosome that is uh, a plus uh, x whereas the sperm has uh, two different types of the allosomes where in one of the sperm it may carry the autosomes are the same whereas the sex chromosome differs where a sperm has a, an x chromosome as well as a sperm may even have y chromosome so by chance if the sperm carrying if the sperm if it is having the x chromosome if it fuses with that of the ova having the x chromosome the resulting offspring will become female okay so the resulting offspring will become female whereas if the sperm carrying y chromosome if it fuses with that of the ova having x chromosome so this results in the formation of okay so this results in the formation of the male so fertilization is involved in the determination of the sex of the next generation thereafter is fertilization so here during the process of fertilization the number of mitochondria increases in that of the zygote and the zygote becomes uh, much more active and this activeness of the zygote uh, helps in the growth and development of the embryo that is uh, during the process of the cleavage as well as the mitotic divisions where energy requirement is more so that is being obtained during the fertilization and the last one is fertilization prevents uh, polyspermy that is you know that that whenever the sperm uh, reaches to that of the plasma membrane of the secondary oocyte so thereafter that plasma membrane gets converted into that of the fertilization membrane and thereafter the cortical granules which are present in the ooplasm so those cortical granules release the cortical enzymes thereby making certain changes where the entire okay the zona pellucida which was earlier soft so now that becomes a hard and that prevents the entry of many number of the sperms so henceforward fertilization is a process which even prevents the entry of many number of sperms into a haploid ova so that is fertilization prevents a polyspermy